In this week's episode, I'll be meeting up with Team Petrona Cynthia Moto Yamaha. That's right, guys. Join me right here in the heart of Kaohsiung City. Petronas's very own talent development driver, Jasman Jaffa, takes a special guest out to lunch, Malaysian style, in London. Hey guys, join me here as I take Sam Bird, the development driver of Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula One team, for some Malaysian food. But of course, we're going to talk about racing. I'm Jasmine Jafar. I'm Sam Bird. And this is Motorsports at Petrodas. With over 2.7 million people that call this city home, Kaohsiung is the second most populated city in Taiwan. But because it sits on the coast, it is a popular destination throughout the year. An attraction you don't want to miss in Kaohsiung is the Dragon and Tiger Pagodas on Lotus Lake. I've been told to enter the Dragon's throat and exit the Tiger's mouth. It symbolizes turning bad luck to good fortune. The Dragon and Tiger Pagodas are a seven-tiered structure located on the man-made Lotus Lake. Surrounded by historic and mythological structures, it's no wonder that this whimsical place is a favorite among tourists. in and out in one of Kaohsiung's main attractions. So, what do you think? Fancy coming to Taiwan anytime soon? While you're thinking of buying that plane ticket, I'm off to the circuit to meet with Team Petrona Cintiam Moto Yamaha. Hello Yuki, so nice to meet you. So, double podium appearances in round 4 in Autopolis and it was a tough fight with Fujiwara for the lead. Did you expect the outcome to be like this? Yeah, but I, I'm i exciting the race. And uh, big fight in Fujiwara, first time. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, again, to the Zuhai. Zuhai, Zuhai to the very big fighting the Fujiwara. Yeah. Yeah. That time was very enjoyed. The second time. Oh, you enjoyed second, the second time. And the second time. Yeah. But big, very, very big, very fast to the Fujiwara because uh, I many ex experienced rider. Oh, uh, okay. I, I understand. I see. But you have a lot of experience too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were you surprised when the team offered you a spot in the final two rounds? Yeah, yeah of course. The, very, I am so happy. I'm so happy. I hope to the Petronas Yamaha team the entry to the Asia Road Race Championship. Is it really different? Is it very different riding for a non-Japanese team? Different. Different. Jap Japanese team is very different. To What's the, the difference? Um, uh, many people. Oh, so this yeah. is like a no the many Malays Malaysian right? Malaysian. Yes. The first time is very uh, uh, no, scary. Scary? Yeah, the, Why? Because the uh, first time the dif different country. Oh, different yes, country. Yes. So it's different country, different people, different language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, very first time very scary. But now? Okay. But, but now is very ni nice team. Very nice, people. nice people. Uh, and and you can communicate yeah. with them. You can talk with them. Many many communication. Yeah. Eat together. 
Oh, very nice. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck in your race. Arigato. Thank you very much. Due to an injury that Ramdan had suffered this year in 2012, we caught up with him right here in Sepang. So, how has your 2012 campaign been so far? Uh, untuk musim pertama 2012 memang uh, saya berhasil dalam uh, kejuaraan ARC dan setakat ini memang uh, saya uh, banyak uh, mengumpul pengalaman yang uh, berharga uh, berhasil di ARC yang buat kali pertama dan uh, saya harap pada tahun depan saya boleh lebih majukan lagi cara segi pengangan saya untuk tahun depan. Ah, so this is your first season racing in the super sport category um, in the championship. How has it been so far? Uh, uh, berhasil pada tahun pertama ya, si memang uh, ada pendapat saya memang uh, agak sukar untuk berada di top five. Tapi uh, pada tahun pertama saya banyak belajar untuk uh, dapat meningkatkan cara tunggangan dan teknik untuk bawa motor super sport dengan lebih baik. Dan setakat ni uh, saya dapat menghabiskan uh, perlumbaan dalam top ten kat atas. Yay, congratulations. However, you have been sidelined by injuries. Uh, how has the recovery period been like so far and how do you keep your fitness level up? Uh, memang uh, saya time dapat injury memang uh, pada saya uh, banyak uh, kos yang pengeluaran yang perlu dikeluarkan uh, untuk uh, lebih cepat untuk dipulihkan dan setakat ni memang saya cuba singkatkan balik uh, saya punya stamina dan uh, segi fizikal saya dan cuba kuatkan balik uh, tangan saya. Uh, supaya dapat berlumba kembali dengan keadaan baik. Also, oh, last question. Let's say a six-year-old boy is watching the show right now, looking at you, and he wants to be a professional rider just like you. What are the steps that he needs to take? Because I'm sure throughout your years, you've seen some who has the talents and those that don't make it. Uh, bagi saya, uh, bakat-bakat muda ni memang uh, perlu dicungkil lah. Uh, sebab kita Contohnya dapat melahirkan pelumba-pelumba uh, muda dan uh, untuk step pertama mesti orang mesti uh, mempunyai uh, keberanian uh, untuk berlumba dalam perlumbaan dan uh, mempunyai minat untuk uh, beraksi dalam perlumbaan. Uh. Don't be afraid, just face your fears, yeah. Okay, good luck Ramdan. Okay. Terima kasih. And it wouldn't be a successful team without the force behind the riders. We caught up with the team's manager, Kenny Chua. Being a team manager is no easy task. Okay, team manager will responsibility. First is the team set up, very important for my team. Second is a team crew. Then after that is a rider. Rider must be, we have uh, must earlier before the race, we might have a very good fitness, uh, riding skill. We have a uh, gift to the rider, must have a lot of the practice for the start of the racing. This is a team manager work. Yeah. When selecting Ramdan and Ito as his riders, Kenny has a list of criteria that he looks for. Because uh, Ramdan is uh, just a uh, very new rider, don't have the like, experience. Ito will come in, actually it's good for him to guide Ramdan to more experience, more riding skill and uh, more speed. Because uh, Ito, quite, uh, the, he already raced in the Japan quite a few years ago. Different riders have different riding styles, but the team does their best to accommodate each need. This is a big problem for the team. Okay, the uh, different rider and the different style. Actually, it's the rider, different rider, the more important for the gear ring ratio. Second is the uh, suspension. Yeah, that's all. Ramdan has been with Kenny's team since the start of his racing career. Here, Kenny tells us about Ramdan's talents that made him stand out. The first I get Ramdan is uh, in pocket bike. He in the pocket bike, the riding skill and the speed corner is really good. Straight away, I have an idea for take him. Then on 2010, Ramdan is 14 years old. He is the 
first joined the CP115 Cup League. For the start, he will get Cup League a lot of podium. So can we see him in the uh, lighting skill and his uh, fighting? Challenging is really good. Yuki Ito has joined the team for the final two rounds of the ARRC. Uh, Yuki Ito, actually, I found him in the Zhuhai race in the August. Uh, as well, Ramdan also have a practice in the Zhuhai. So it's a different category. Uh, Ito Yuki will be 1000cc and Ramdan is a 600cc. So the time and the Ramdan uh, is the different, just uh, two seconds. And uh, his fighting speed is really good. Should be for him to be and get a uh, top three to top five, so no problem. Riders marred by injuries do not stop a racing team from pressing on. But remember, motorsports is a very serious and dangerous activity. It should only be done by those that are professionally trained and racing should only take place in proper racing circuits that are supervised by experienced marshals and medical team. A Thai warmer, first of all, it looks like this, okay? It's like uh, clothing skin to wrap around the tyre. It's to give uh, optimum uh, temperature for the tyre to perform. Um, in most cases, when we, uh, we keep the tyres warm uh, at a certain temperature, and um, when it goes out uh, to practice or to race, it will enhance the performance of the tyre to the right temperature. It will actually uh, um, grip so well as though as they are running uh, a few laps uh, ahead there. Yeah? Uh, this is uh, very important because um, a cold tyre will not grip, especially those GP tyres, even for cars or for bikes, they won't grip when they are cold. So this is why the technology of uh, these tyre warmers are built to give uh, enhancement of tyre performance during the first uh, few laps of the uh, uh, test or race. You know? So uh, it's important that the tyres will grip. The, tire, the rider will actually feel more confident when they are when they're out there in the early stage. This is England, a land so rich in history, it's hard to ignore the vast influence it had on the world's past. And what more in the history of motorsports? Not only did they have one of the world's first purpose-built motor racing circuit in Surrey, they too are one of the pioneers of fine European racing machines. Hey you guys, behind me is the Brooklyn's Museum. Now this is the birthplace of British motorsports and aviation. It is also the world's first racing circuit. It was built by local landowner Hugh Locke King, who built it on his 330 acres of farm and woodlands. Now construction on the racing circuit began in late 1906, and it was opened to public 1907. This outstanding feat of engineering took nine months to build, and cost the landowner his personal fortune. A few days after it opened its motor course in June 1907, a motor racing pioneer named Selwyn Francis H used the track to establish a 24 hours record. He covered 2,544.37 kilometers with an average speed of almost 106.2 kilometers an hour. This record stood for 17 years after. It now displays a wide range of Brooklyn's related motoring and aviation exhibits. Alright, it's time for you guys to head back to London because I hear that Jasmine will be talking to Mr. Sam Bird. He's one of the test drivers for the Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula 1 team. And I hear he'll be treating him to a very special cuisine, Malaysian food, which I will not get the chance to taste. 
Hey, Jazz. Hey, Sam. Welcome. Hey, you okay? Good to see you. Good to see you as well, Let's buddy. have some Malaysian food. Let's do it. After you. Sam, thank you for joining me for lunch. We've got a feast in front of us. And uh, have you had Malaysian food before? I've had it once, Jasmine, when I was in Malaysia for the Grand Prix earlier this year, but uh, I'm really looking forward to trying it here. Well, we've got a feast ahead, so uh, dig in. Um, Sam, can you tell us um, a little bit of your involvement with uh, Mercedes AMG Petronas? Yes, uh, this year, 2012, I am the development driver for Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula One team. Uh, this includes going to each Grand Prix basically as a reserve driver in case there were any unfortunate circumstance yeah, to happen to Nico or Michael. It also includes a lot of simulator work um, and when I'm at the racetrack speaking to sponsors and, and the media. Excellent, it must be a busy weekend for you. Absolutely. Can you tell us how, we, uh, how you started in your involvement in racing? I wanted to become a racing driver since I was three years old. I kept on telling my mum and dad, mum, dad, I need to go go-karting. Uh, when I was eight years old, I had my first taste of go-karting and, and just caught the bug massively. And since then, you go through the ranks, you do your karting and then Formula BMW, you work your way up through Formula Renault, Formula 3. I've uh, since competed in GP2, uh, World Series at the moment this year. And obviously, I've now got a route into Formula 1 through Mercedes. Excellent. Sam, tell me the difference between a World Series car to an F1 car, and as well as I am racing British Formula 3, and how different is that to, to what others you've driven? Formula One is the pinnacle of motorsport jazz and it is so sophisticated and so technical. World Series is a very fast car um, which has no power steering but carbon brakes and paddle shifting. It also has 550 brake horsepower with Michelin tyres so it's very grippy. Yeah. So Sam, how is it like uh, being part of Mercedes AMG Petronas and all the development you have done as well in the sim and also all the young driver tests? So share with us, you know, all the feedbacks that you've given to the team. Well, firstly, I'd like to say it's a privilege to be involved with, with the team, with Mercedes. They are the biggest, um, you know, and most famous kind of luxury production car mm -hmm. in the world. So to be associated with that brand is, is perfect for me right now with my career. Mm -hmm. um, I've done the rookie test over the last two years mm -hmm. and they've gone very, very well. And I'm very proud and, of, of the work that I've been able to do. And, when I see that there has been an improvement in the car, mm -hmm. I take great satisfaction of knowing that I may have had a small part in helping the car move along in that way. Sam, your career is growing every day and every year. If you were to have a headline, what would you want it to be? Well, I dreamt as a kid, and I still dream of it now. Um, you've got to go with uh, going to the top, and I hope one day in the future, I don't know when that day will be, but I do hope that if I keep on learning, improving and pushing and the way things are going now, I hope that one day newspapers will read Sam Bird, dot dot, Formula One World Champion. Excellent. Sam, besides four wheels, what are your other, other interests or hobbies? I enjoy playing football. Oh. I enjoy cricket. Um, I love playing golf, uh, socialising with friends. Um, you know, the normal kind of things that athletes like to do, obviously keeping fit. I enjoy pushing myself to the limit in the gym, but also, you know, listening to music, going to the cinema and stuff like that as well. How do you divide your time with your World Series program, Formula One testing program, as well as being an F1 columnist? Well, thankfully, none of those things collide. My World Series campaign is on different weekends to Formula One. Okay. So I can pay, you know, full attention to World Series or Formula One when needed. As to doing my Formula One columns and media stuff, mm -hmm. that fits in around everything else really. Um, obviously the racing comes first, but then when off the track, after debriefing with engineers, then it's time to do media stuff. And I think it's important to do that kind of stuff. If you're good at that, then sponsors are happy and you, know, you get a bigger name for yourself. Sam, what are the pressure points of being an F1 development driver? The pressure points? Um, the fact that I'm always under scrutiny. The fact that engineers are always looking at what I'm doing and yep. looking at my improvement and um, my progression rate. You know, the aim for me is to get to Formula One, but in order to do that, I need to be impressing the people within the team and I need to be doing well in World Series by Renault. So, if anything, that's a little bit of a pressure, but I think all drivers are the same. All drivers are under pressure all the time to perform, yeah, it's and it's how you deal with that. Sam, speaking about popularity, um, there's three Tumblr pages on you, and uh, how does it like? feel, you know, 
quite popular, your name is rising up, you're part of Formula One now. It's a good thing. It means that I must be doing something right anyway. So, you know, I thank fans and, and the public for supporting me. Yeah. But it's, uh, I think it's a good thing. You like it, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Sam, we've got final fruit <laughs> for us left. And um, thank you for joining me. I really enjoyed it and I learned a lot from you as well from going to the Grand Prix myself. Pleasure. And uh, start the game. Pleasure. Thanks, Jess. Well, we're all aware of the fact that it's compulsory to wear seatbelts in the front of a car, but very few people do in the rear. And when you think about it, if you come to a sudden stop and you've got rear passengers without a seatbelt, then the next thing they're going to hit is the seat in front or the back of the head of the driver or the passenger. So for me, it's completely logical that every time you're in a car, you should wear a seatbelt, whether it's in the front, the back, or even if you find yourself in the boot, maybe they should put a seatbelt in the boot. And by the way, don't forget to log on to www.petmos.com.my if you want to see your favourite teams, drivers and race results. Hey guys, join me here in London as I take Sam Bird, the development driver of Mercedes-AMG Petronas Formula 1 team for some Malaysian cuisine. Uh, Sam, you got a very, very... I've got, I've got food in my teeth. Hey you guys, behind me is the Bricklands Bricklands? There's so many bricks. There are too many bricks. There are too many bricks here.